This is a CBS News special report, The Flight of Apollo 10, brought to you by Western Electric, manufacturing and supply unit of the Bell System, as part of our continuing coverage of important news events. Reporting from CBS News Apollo headquarters, Kennedy Space Center, correspondent Walter Cronkite. Good afternoon from the Kennedy Space Center. Well, man's second voyage to the moon is well underway. A beautiful launch from here at 12.49 at noon, at Eastern Daylight Time. That was uh, just uh, two and a half hours ago. And now the uh, uh, Apollo Command ship is on its second orbit of the Earth. It's over Australia, and in a very short while from now, it should be firing to go into translunar trajectory. Get on the way to the moon itself. It's making these two orbits of the Earth to check out all of the command systems aboard the ship, and they all so far have been reported in good shape with one minor exception. There is a faulty auxiliary cooling unit in the command ship, but uh, that is no constraint against going into the lunar orbit, it is believed. And very shortly, the go will be given, and uh, they will fire off the third stage of the Saturn rocket, to which they are still attached. It will fire off with 225,000 pounds of thrust and push them up to a speed of almost 25,000 miles an hour, which is adequate to escape the Earth's gravitational pull, put them into an, a flight that will take them close enough to the moon to be captured by the moon's gravitational pull. And then they'll go into orbit around the moon, and that will come on Wednesday. The orbital velocity right now is 17,158 miles an hour, we have been told. They're in an orbit 123 uh, miles by 109 statute miles. And that ignition of the engine for translunar injection will come at 322, which is uh, just five minutes from now. They will add 7,117 miles per hour to their velocity and achieve then a velocity of 24,275 miles per hour. It's quite a, a jolt they'll be getting from that uh, engine when they do go into translunar trajectory. They'll speed up uh, uh, by almost uh, 10,000 feet per second and uh, they will finally, and that burn will go for five minutes and 43 seconds. So it really is uh, quite a, quite a uh, acceleration uh, as they begin the translunar in, uh, trajectory. The flight has gone uh, exceedingly well, as we say. The launch went exactly on time this morning at 12.49, and it was a beautiful launch uh, for those of you who were with us and saw it. They, uh, the, no problems at all with the astronauts reporting that it was a fantastic sight. They were the most excited astronauts we've had in a long time, although it's the most experienced crew we've ever put up. Tom Stafford has had two flights in the Gemini, and uh, John Young has had two flights in Gemini, and Cernan, Eugene Cernan, had one flight in Gemini. Uh, but uh, even so, their enthusiasm was clear, as they said it was fantastic, just fantastic, a great ride. Oh, boy, should you see that. Bill Stout and Leo Krupp, test engineer at North American Rockwell in Downey, California, can tell us what's going to happen as they fire off this uh, third stage engine and go into translunar uh, trajectory. Gentlemen? Walter, Leo was just telling me that even though they're hurtling through space and have been weightless for a time, that firing you talk about is going to make quite a change in the feeling inside the cabin. What will it be like, Leo? Well, Bill, for the last two and a half hours, the crew has been in a weightless or zero-g condition and as soon as they ignite the S-4B, or the S-4B is ignited by the ground signal, they will experience an acceleration, which will be just like you're sitting in your chair right now, about a 1G acceleration. So they, for five minutes and 22 seconds while the S-4B is firing, they will be back in almost an Earth environment again in, in the cabin. As soon as the thrust is terminated, however, they'll go right back into the zero-G or the weightless condition. And uh, they will be in this condition then for the rest of the trip to the moon, except for the short periods when they may be firing their thrusters for mid-course corrections. But in effect, it's a return to that feeling of gravity, almost a return to Earth for a moment there. Hmm? For about five minutes and 22 seconds, they'll be back to approximately a 1G uh, condition. Now, as soon as the, as soon as the burn is completed, uh, Tom Stafford is going to swap seat seats with John Young. John Young right now is in the center couch and uh, Tom Stafford is in the left couch. And he'll do almost all the flying from here on in this mission, right? That's right. Walter? Right after the translunar injection then, 
Now that coming at uh, 3.22, two minutes from now, we will then have the transposition and docking, the command module separating from the rest of the booster uh, and turning around and getting the lunar module there in the nose of the third stage, pulling it out, and then they're on the way to the moon alone. CBS News color coverage of the flight of Apollo 10 will continue in a moment. That transposition takes place at 3.48 uh, this afternoon, and at that time, too, it is expected that Tom Stafford will turn on the color television camera for our first color television from space, a look at that exciting transposition and docking, the first critical maneuver of the mission since they've been in Earth orbit, and uh, perhaps we'll get a look back at Earth from up around 10,000 miles up. It should be pretty exciting. Transposition docking should be taking place just about now. Let's listen to Mission Control in Houston as they report what's going on out there in space. Booster engineer says the Saturn is go. That's right on time. Roger, copy. That's it. The third stage fired. Now if it keeps firing for five minutes, a little over. Can uh, Houston, you have four feet, looks good. Boost that speed to 24,275 miles per hour for a three-day trip to the moon. The second spaceship is on the way to the moon. Six thousand four hundred feet per second velocity now. Hello, Apollo 10, Houston. At one minute, you're looking great. Roger, one minute, everything looks good on board. It's Tom Stafford. Cool, matter-of-fact voice from these skilled test pilots. Now undergoing the greatest the, test uh, of their career. Roger. Velocity 27,500 feet per second. That's about three fourths of the velocity they need, or roughly 20,000 miles an hour. They need 24,275 miles an hour. They started out at 17,400. If the S-4B third stage shut down at this point, the spacecraft would continue into a high elliptical orbit around the Earth. Way to watch the sunrise. Right. That was Gene Cernan. Twenty-nine thousand feet per second. Who's up, Gene? Roger, copy, Tom. Tom Stafford reporting three quarters of 1G. 1G is Earth gravity. That is the weight of a body All on Earth. Again, uh, Houston coming up uh, three minutes. Uh, trajectory looks great. Three minutes, everything looks good, Charlie. Beautiful, beautiful communications. Ten, Houston, we got a predicted cutoff, two plus three nine plus one zero. Two plus three nine plus one zero. It should be emerging about now from the... Wow, right into the sky here. All right. From 
the dark side of the Earth, and then in their translunar trajectory, they will be in full sunlight the entire trip. That means that on the sunny side of the spacecraft, a warm up to 280 degrees Fahrenheit. Feet per second velocity. On the shadow side of the, of the command ship, to minus 280 degrees. And so that they don't boil Rest away. Altitude 123 miles. Body sand go. The S4B is looking great. All right, your Houston uh, tender looks good on board. So they don't fry on one side and freeze on the other. They set up a circular motion of the spacecraft. One revolution uh, per hour, so that it turns at about the rate of the minute hand of a clock. Keeps one uh, keeps the temperature balanced between the two sides. Say again. We're getting some snow. Understand the small, small yaw oscillations, 10? Negative high frequency vibrations. Oh, I saw. Five. Yaw is a motion In from five side. Minutes, we still have to go, 10. Yaw is a motion from side to side. And if it were severe, it uh, could be quite critical. There's no uh, no indication it is severe. It's a slight yaw motion. According to our calculations, the engine should have shut down now. Uh, Dan Houston in the blind uh, at cutoff. Up uh, telemetry IU to accept. Seco. engine cut off. We confirm the cut off. 8.422.1. And so that third Roger, stage copy. has done the job. They're on the way to the moon. And we should believe my Delta VC is minus point six. Roger, minus point six on the Delta VC. That's beautiful. Yes, it's that, Jerry. And, uh, Charlie, we got an O2 full high in light in the middle of the burn here, which we can't account for. Stand by, uh, John. At this point, if anything went wrong, they can go out to the moon, circle the moon, and come back home without firing another rocket except to position themselves for landing. They are now on a trajectory which will carry them within the moon's gravitational pull with Apollo perhaps... Dan, Houston in the blind, uh, have a LOS at Redstone 2 plus 4, 1, C over Hawaii, 2 plus 4, Perhaps one or two mid-course corrections of a very small amount. I want you on a 2 on the circuit water accumulator. That's all I had to think of. It was right at 10 minutes when it happened. Right, uh, we think that uh, cabin pressure regs uh, kicked in there for that O2 flow, uh, John. They just went out in the snow stone to drop snow, so it looks like we're in good shape. Okay, fine. You're beginning to fade out. Uh, we think we'll be losing you through the redstone here in a, uh, about 30 seconds. Hawaii at 2 plus 4-4. Four, four. Uh, uh, and uh, 10 in the blind. Uh, everything we got looks nominal. You're on your way. The communications are still through the ground tracking stations for Earth orbital flight. Uh, they say they're going to lose communication. They will very briefly uh, while the spacecraft gets out behind all of the shadows of the Earth and then become, comes into direct contact with the huge 85-foot uh, high-gain antennas placed uh, equidistant three points around the Earth at uh, Madrid, Spain, at Goldstone, California and at Honeysuckle in Australia near Canberra.
They will establish contact there uh, in time for that transposition and docking maneuver, which comes at 348. Transposition at 348, docking at 358, and our first color transmissions, we hope, at that time. This trouble they were talking about, uh, the yawing, we heard no more about that, so it apparently was not severe. An O2 flow uh, does not concern, uh, it, it is probably concerned with environmental control system, could be concerned with the radiators they had a little trouble with earlier, don't know about that. But at any rate, they didn't seem too concerned about it. And nearly all of the uh, command uh, systems, uh, they have redundancy, as they say, a backup system. And as you heard, they're perfectly calm. There doesn't seem to be anything of constraint in the flight. As I was saying earlier, if anything did go wrong as far as propulsion systems go, however, they would go right on out to the moon. They'd be caught by the moon's gravity, thrown around, and then they'd have so much momentum, they'd come out of moon's gravity and back toward uh, the Earth again on a free trajectory for a re-entry. Uh, however, they expect, of course, to slow down enough to go into lunar orbit and then to do their lunar module exercises and come back finally on Saturday. That is, start back on Saturday. That's, that's a 4B third stage is now, they finished with that, don't need it anymore. They'll be separating from it when this transition and docking is completed. CBS News color coverage of the flight of Apollo 10 will continue in a moment.